let's go into some uh, more complicated uh, phase diagrams, binary phase diagrams, than kind of our simple lens diagram that we just started with. So um, before we get started with that, a phase transition can uh, occur congruently or incongruently. So a congruent phase uh, transition will occur when there's a complete transformation from one phase to another with no change in composition. Uh, but an incongruent, uh, incongruent phase uh, uh, transition is a partial transformation from one phase to another, just like what we saw with the lens diagram. So let's go ahead and let's look at a little bit of an example. So here, if I go from, if I'm at pure uh, nickel, so if I am 100% nickel, I go from pure nickel to liquid here. So I'm liquid here. Or I can go here at this composition, in this single line, I am TiNi3, uh, titanium uh, nickel. So I'm this pure single phase. So I'm going from a pure single phase to another phase with no change in composition. Same thing here, titanium nickel. You can see I'm kind of different here, going from liquid to solid. But let's say, for example, this is beta. This is liquid, so this is beta plus liquid. If I go from here to here, I go to a two-phase ring. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> that email. Let me close my email for just a second. I'm going into a two-phase region. So in order to kind of change from the liquid phase here to this beta plus liquid, I am going to phase separate, right? So as I cool down to like, let's say this composition, I'm going to phase separate into this beta and into this liquid right here from my liquidus line. So if you transition completely from one phase to another with no change in composition, so i.e. I go from liquid to this uh, you know, I go from liquid to you know, nickel, or if I go from liquid to Ti and I3, or I go from liquid to uh, basically to beta titanium, I'm going from at a single composition. But if I go through a two-phase region, you see I'm phase separating. This is my composition right here, a beta. This is my composition of liquid. This is my composition of beta. This is, again, it's change in composition as we kind of transform. So that's kind of the key idea. So no change in composition for congruent. So all of these here, here, here are congruent melting points. That's kind of the key idea. Here, when we phase separate, we're doing so incongruently because, again, there's a change in composition, just like we saw with the lens diagram. So typically, if you're going from, uh, from liquid to a two-phase region, plus liquid, then this is incongruent. If I'm just going from basically liquid to some type of solid, you know, it could be solid, alpha, beta, titanium, et cetera, et cetera. That's going to be congruent. So that's just kind of the key ideas here. So let's get into uh, one of the more common phase diagrams that you may encounter, which is a eutectic phase diagram. So we've done the simple binary lens phase diagram, um, but one of the ones that you'll see common is this kind of binary eutectic phase diagram. So it has kind of a couple cool features. So we can see in our uh, slides here, we have, so remember, so all my congruent melting points here, here, here's a congruent melting point, always have congruent melting points on this kind of sides here, um, but those are all the congruent melting points that I have. So uh, there's a couple kind of cool unique characteristics here. So remember, this is A, this is B, this is our binary eutectic phase diagram. So we have a pure phase region of A, you know, this is basically our A in the alpha phase, whatever, remember, Alpha could be BCC, FCC, whatever structure A is. B, or beta, is, again, BCC, FCC, whatever it is, again, that B is. We also have this solid solution here of this alpha plus beta. And then we have a liquidus line, you know, this alpha plus liquid region. So, again, this two-phase region. So, this line is what? This is our liquidus line here. Anything that's in contact, two-phase region that's uh, our line that's in contact with liquid, this is our another liquidus line. Like this, this would be our solidus line, solidus, solidus. So we have this two-phase, you know, solid region. I'm going to discard all this and then go back to our notes. So we have uh, this solid-solid phase mixture. We also have these limits of solubilities, uh, and actually we could figure out what's the maximum solubility limit. Um, so if I look back at my curve here, this is telling me that. I can fit this much of, essentially, remember, this is pure A, this is pure B. I could fit, let's say that this is 10%, or 10 atomic percent, or 10, you know, 0.1 mole fraction, or, you know, mole fraction here. 
this is telling me I could fit 0.1% or 0.1, you know, uh, 10% of B into A without transforming. But once I add more, then I have B in this kind of two-phase region here. So at different temperatures, I have a different solubility limit. So again, I could fit this amount of, you know, again, this is pure A except for we're going to the concentrations of B. Similarly, if this was at, let's say this is at 98. I mean, I'm going to do percents. Uh, that's a little bit easier to work with. Or 0.9. This is saying that at this particular temperature here, but this is also uh, my maximum solubility limit, I can fit 0.02 of A into B and still be in this beta phase. So I can easily identify what's the limits or what's my maximum solubility. It's here. This is my maximum solubility here. This is my maximum solubility here. So looking at these curves, you can just ignore actually X be important, but um, it seems to me that I'm able to fit more of basically B into A than A into B. So which has higher diffusivity? Diffusivity of B is greater than diffusivity of A because this appears to penetrate more. Look at this distance. So this distance versus this little distance right here. So you could figure out your maximum solubility. So let's go ahead and back here. Figure out again. There's been very important in this phase diagram as well. This eutectic point. We can figure out the solubility solubility limit. So let's look at the solubility of B into A and A into B. Solidus lines, liquidus lines. Let's go back here. So let's open this up one more time. So at this temperature, what's the solubility of uh, B into A? Right here. I have to do one minus. What about A into B? Right here. So you can identify those two points. That's my solubility. Well, this is a concentration, but again, it'd be kind of the inverse, right? So it's not going to be this percent. So there's my B into A. And there's also an invariant point here, right? So I have a point right here, an invariant point in this phase diagram, where I convert, if I'm at this composition, this special composition called the XB eutectic, so this eutectic point, this eutectic point, I go through this transition where I'm simultaneously, at this point, my, my phases are equal to three, liquid, alpha, and beta. So if I have three phases, I know that my D plus P equals C plus one. So components, two, phases three, degrees freedom, zero. So let me back up. So I am converting, in this eutectic diagram, I'm going from liquid to an alpha plus beta. That's the transition that's occurring here. You can also, right here, at this invariant point, this eutectic point. So this is a type of invariant point that you're kind of in, uh, basically anticipating here or actually experiencing. So let's look, and you can kind of draw different microstructures here. So for example, A is just kind of this all this red region. If I am kind of at this composition here, again, this is actually drawn a little bit uh, poorly. Uh, so if I'm actually right here at this kind of given temperature, there's a little bit, again, of a plus some liquid. If I'm over here in this composition, again, I'm closer to the alpha side than I am to the beta side here. So you get this kind of get this combination. Uh, you can see this microstructure for the eutectic. So going from liquid to all alpha plus beta, and right here as well, again, alpha and beta as well. So we can go ahead. And, uh, we're going to start to kind of identify lots of different types of invariant points. So we figured out. This, this, solidus, liquidus, you're all experts on that at this point. Filling out phase diagrams, we're going to be doing a lot more examples in it. But there are four types of invariant points uh, that we're going to focus on a lot in this class. Five, typically, but this is a very, very special case. But we are going to focus on eutectic, eutectoid, peritectic, and peritectoid. So the eutectic point is an invariant point. We just kind of described the degrees of freedom is equal to zero. So this was our first uh, invariant point, the eutectic. So where liquid goes to alpha plus beta. So in the next video, we are going to uh, basically see how we can identify eutectics, eutectoids, peritectics, and peritectoids. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.